came from the lower leagues, worked his way up. Now he's getting them buckets. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, especially if you're a Columbus Crew fan, for the one, the only, Miguel Berry, everybody! How you guys doing? Uh, you know, the Columbus disrespect, I, I understand it. You know, I'm living in... in uh, no in disrespect, California. but if you compare it to Barcelona, <laughs> right? nah, of course. But you know what? I, you know, my brother just came out here from downtown LA, and he was pleasantly surprised with how nice Columbus is. And I think a lot of people around around the country would be too. But you know, I, right. I understand. I'll, I'll take the joke and I'll laugh with it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, we, we love we, Columbus. We had a good time there. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did a show there. We had a good time. It's uh, you look. We if 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 anything, if you're here to just change the narrative about Columbus, then that's all good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have our we have our New York bias. You know. Yeah, so, well, yeah, New York, New York is a bit is a bit bigger than Columbus. So I'll give you that. Just a little so I can, bit. I can see, a little I can see different. Why you the pizza's that. a little different out here. Uh, <laughs> let's let's start uh, getting to know you a little bit better. Uh, you know, when when people hear about you, they yeah, they obviously. Uh, they see the the you know born in Barcelona, two American parents, uh, and not not number not two, but two. From, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> but the um, but but that that journey, like, what was the uh, you know your your introduction to the sport? Did your parents push you into it? Was it just a natural thing to do in Barcelona? And then when you got to the United States, it was like, well, okay, where am I going to go play? Well, I'm lucky enough to have an older brother. So, you know, everything, everything he did, I did. Um, and he was the first in the family to play, to play soccer out there. And I think it's, like you said, it's something naturally you do um, out there. You know, if, if you're not playing soccer, you're probably the weird kid. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. you know, we got, we got straight into that, you know, at an early age. And uh, like you said, you know, when you come to America, it's, uh, you, we immediately found, you know, try to find a local club. And I think the level was, was a bit different than I was used to in Spain for sure. Um, but you know, it was one of those things that you know I, I look mean, back say, on now. Just say, just say, they were they were trash. I was good. They were trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. better than everybody. It worked out <laughs> great for him. <laughs> yeah, I, know, we, I went from learning like the you know principles of tiki taka to playing with guys doing cartwheels on the field. So <laughs> yeah. it was it was, uh, it was definitely like a, a you know a big shock for me. But it's, I think it took me a couple of years to get used to. But you know, it's grown so much since then. So it, it's crazy to see all these young kids. I, I think you know. Compared to you know when I was a kid, the, the way the way soccer was in this country, it's already moved on you know so much in the last fifteen years. So it's in, it's incredible. I'm really happy to see that. Yeah, and in fact, uh, you took sort of a you know a different route, right? You went to the San Diego Loyal. What was that like being coached by Landon Donovan? You know, what I mean? <laughs> just a legend. I mean, no, the guy's done everything. Yeah, it was awesome. It's the first time in my life I've had a forward who's who's been a coach, my coach as well. So that was that in itself, not to mention probably one of the best American ones ever. So yeah. that was, that was incredible. And, you know, the first couple of times I met him, I thought, I thought, Oh, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be so cool. It's Landon Donovan. And then you realize he's just a normal guy. You know, he's, he's a normal guy who knows, you know, a lot about soccer. So that was uh, incredibly, you know, helpful and nice. And I mean, he, he, he took me in and he treated me like I was on, you know, you know, you're on loan. And I was there, I think a total of, of 14 games over two years. So not, I think two months over two years. So it wasn't a whole lot of time. But it was the kind of thing where he, you know, really like treated me like I was on the team long term and then and helped me grow as a player. OK, yeah. I mean, th there there has to be that like uh, you, you mentioned uh, being a coach by a forward and it just it brought to my mind like every coach is like a goalkeeper or a center back. I'm like, why is it what is it about being a forward that is that there must be like that diva ness where I'm like, I got to tell you what to do. In just the me the ball. They retire. <laughs> yeah. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> no, you know what it is? We, we like to blame everyone else. So, uh, right, right. so exactly. So <laughs> that, one, that doesn't make a good coach. We don't like the problem solve. It's everyone else's problem. Hey, get me the ball. The yeah. issue is the 10 guys behind me. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. You know, if only they were doing what they're supposed to do, I'd look a lot better. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Have, did, they have, did they ever try to move you into the midfield or a defender? Because every defender we've ever spoken to was like, I started out as a forward. Now I'm a center back. Did they so, try to do that with you at some point in your youth career as well? When I was in Spain, my coach, I went from scoring all these goals to striker to insisting my coach insisted on me learning how to play right back. Uh, in Spain. So he wanted to, you wanted to, you know, complete, you know, give me complete knowledge of the game. So he moved me to right back, uh, unless we needed a goal, then he gave me a move back right, up right. front, but, uh, <laughs> but he moved me to right back. And then I think I came to America and I played some center midfield cause I was, you know, I think I was, you know, technically a, you know, a bit a higher level than some of the guys, uh, when I was eight, nine, ten years old. 
Um, you know, I played some center midfield, but, uh, and some winger when I was smaller and, and other guys are bigger than me, but you know, I've, I've always been a striker. I've always been a goal scorer. So right, right. that's what I've always seen myself. And it is, it looks very, um, you know, you know, it's obviously a very, na- you, you look natural doing it, especially for the Columbus crew, you know, the, the, the minutes that you are getting and, and obviously, uh, you know, Jazzy's artist is dealing with an injury right now. So, and trying to, uh, make that playoff push. Uh, it, it feels like uh, a, a lot is going to be asked of you uh, in these next uh, few games. What has that, you know, what have you also, what have you kind of learned from playing behind the striker like Giazzi? And then also what is the coaching staff? What's Caleb Porter asking of you in, in these like very, very difficult uh, and important games? I think I'm probably the luckiest guy. I mean, Giazzi probably the best guy in the league to play behind. If I mean, not. It, you know, worse if you want to play, because that guy is right. always fit and he, play, he can run more than anyone ever I've ever seen. But um, in terms of learning, I mean, that guy, first of all, he's an unbelievable human being. And, you know, in terms of his work rate and in, in, in training and in games, it's just second to none around the league. And I think he's so undervalued and underappreciated. And it's, it's, it's painful to see sometimes what people say about him. It's, it's, it's pain. It really, hate, it really hurts me. I, I can't stand it. He is, bro. He's, 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 wild. He is, he's so good. He's so uh, underrated and so good. Um, and really, I just I try to emulate him. I think my last goal against New York uh, Red Bull, I mean, I think it was Jossie Zarda's goal. Right, uh, right. The most Jossie Zarda's goal, you know, you could score <laughs> you know, a little near post run. Um, and I've seen him do it so many times. So I'm, I'm lucky to learn from him. And I think, you know, Caleb in these games, I think he, he expects me to, to do it as much as I can do to do what Jossie does, which that's work defensively first and, and uh, you know, kind of set the tone for the team and, and put the ball in the back of the net. So... Uh, you know, it's obviously a tall order because Jossie is one of the league's best. But, you know, I, I really think I can I can fill in and do it. So and both uh, SoCal guys, you know, both Southern California dudes yeah, yeah. just hanging out in the Midwest. <laughs> when, when you look at the type of like what the style of play of Columbus demands of a, of a forward seems to me like it's different than most other clubs in the league. Right. Like you kind of have to understand where the ball is going to go. You've got to make those certain runs. You've got to be in certain spaces. But the benefit to that is you could literally just put your foot out and it seems like where the cross is coming from, it's going to go in the goal, at least from watching Giazzi play and especially the goal you scored against, uh, you know, New York. It seems like all you really got to do is get one good touch on it and redirect it. Has that have you needed to change the way you've sort of learned and developed in the game or do you think this fits right in with sort of how you play? I, you know, honestly, I think going back to like my college, I don't think it fits at all in really how I played in college. But the, the beauty of the system is that, you know, if you're willing to put in the work, it'll it'll reward you, um, you know, in theory and in practice. I think um, defensively, I think we're asked to do more than any other forwards in the league. Uh, and that's I don't think that's a, that's a lie. Maybe maybe you could look at Red Bull and, and say their pressing system or or San Jose, maybe in their man to man. But I think I think in terms of structurally defending, I think you have to defend more than any team in the league. And. Um, you know, defending is not as fun, but you know, like you said, you know, if you, if you have that structure around, you know, where to be, it makes it easier to, to make those runs. And, and you're not so not, not that you're ever lost out there, but it's, I think the structure kind of gives you, uh, ideas and, and, and things that you'll see in games and it'll, it'll crop up and hopefully, you know, you're there to stick out your foot, like you said, and score. Right, Although right. I like to think I did a little bit more than just close my eyes. You certainly did. Miguel's just lounging out there. And all of a sudden, <laughs> actually, so he was in a hammock and he just stuck his foot out of yeah. the hammock and the ball bounced the grand I was like, you know, the kid got a hammock out there, but he knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, when I tell my kids about that goal, I would have beaten, you know, four or five players and then flipped one in the top corner. They don't need right, to right, know. Right. You know, they don't need to know. <laughs> the uh, official was on my back. I had to get that guy off me. <laughs> What's up, guys? Landon Donovan here, and I got to kick it with the Cooligans today. Keep following, keep listening, keep watching. See you guys soon. Playing with a player like Darlington Nagby, who is, is I mean... W- Look, I've 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 played, you know, not at any professional level, but I've gotten the luxury, uh, the luxury, the privilege of just being on uh, like a five a side game with with ex MLS players, and and you see the gap in talent very quickly, right? <laughs> you 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 get close, you try to defend, and you're like, you know what? There's no way. It, there's no way I'm touching this ball. It is not going to happen. But I can imagine that professional MLS players go up against Donington Abbey and say, you know what? 
I don't think I'm ever touching this ball. I, I'm not getting the ball from this guy. What's it like knowing that you have a guy like that that has a magnet on his boot that you, he will not lose it and always get the, the pass, uh, you know, maintain possession and get the ball where it needs to go? What is it like playing with a guy like that? <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, it's so, some of the things I, I just remember last year, you know, early, like, you know, early in my rookie season, you know, you're in possession and, and you see him as like the neutral. You just kick the ball at him and he'll keep it. You know what I mean? It'll, you kick it at his throat and he'll somehow, you know, bring it down and turn and it, it's incredible and you know i think i've taken the ball from him in training in two years maybe twice wow uh, so it's the kind of thing where you know i call my brother as soon as it happens that like, you have no idea what happened today in training i took <laughs> the ball from darlington uh but i mean he's for me he's probably the best player in the league um and i and i think it's it's just such a privilege and, and honor to play with him you know another great example of a great person uh you know a winner hard worker and it's just it's amazing to have something, something like that in your locker room. And I think, you know, if we look back at winning MLS Cup with, with him with COVID, it's just it's just incredible right. what that team was able to do last year. Because um, he's he's truly like he's he's so important to what we do and and he's you know he's a, he's a human press breaker. So so yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. when you look at the defenders on 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 the team, like and you gotta go up against these guys in training, who's the hardest? Cause I love how this, it's not always the one you think. Like, who's the one who's hardest for you to go up against? Where you're like, man, can I go? You put me back at right back. So I don't have to deal with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, th that's the thing. I think they're all, it depends what you do. Because cause Jonathan Mensah, any balls in the air, I've never seen someone head a ball harder than him. He put his head through like concrete. I mean, it's, it's incredible <laughs> what that guy can do. And, and you know, Vito is so strong. He's got this one nail that, that he like doesn't cut. And he was, I end up with scratches all over myself. He's got this like this his thumbnail. He does, I'm telling you, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Josh, what does he use Josh it for? Is, is it like poke the the yeah, uh, the, to, the to to open to, Amazon to, boxes? I mean, to cut me, man. Is to keep a razor around. Oh. <laughs> exactly. You, you know, jo nail. Josh always knows where you are. Josh Williams, it's incredible. And we got you know Booba Keita, who I, I think is physically one of the best players in the team. He's the fastest, strongest guy probably on the team. Um, so they all, uh, they're all annoying to go against. I think that I'm lucky. This makes me a much better player. Uh, cause I think every team we play against, I go, ah, these guys aren't nearly as good as, you know, what we got. So, um, it makes you a better player for sure. Okay. Yeah. You're like, this guy clips all his nails. This guy <laughs> easy. <laughs> So, so the uh, you know uh, let's talk about uh, Columbus Crew and and you know hopefully uh, trying to repeat as uh, MLS Cup champs. Uh, the, these uh, next gotta get in the playoffs first. Yeah, yeah. There's three games remaining. There's still an opportunity to 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 make it to uh, the playoffs. Uh, I saw your your post game comments after the loss to to Red Bull. There there's it's obviously uh, uh, difficult to lose in that matter manner and to and, and to drop points. But the these like uh, uh, these next few games, what what is the you know uh, the sort of the mind your mindset uh, trying to get locked in to, to you know be so to be in this position to be under this pressure to to have this beautiful new stadium and really want to give uh, the fans a, a a playoff game a home playoff game hopefully or something. Uh, what is that feeling like for you in in these next few weeks of of the regular season? You know, not a lot changes. I think. Uh, I think. I feel like every time you know I've been in, it's, it's almost been like a crunch time situation. So I think for me, it's just you know, staying focused. And, and I I love winning. I I'm not a good loser. You know, the fact that they, they, I had to do an interview after right. losing. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man, I'm surprised I didn't say worse things than because I. I mean, I'm, I'm not. A, I'm a very sore loser. Um, and so it's you know it's difficult. Uh, but I, I for me, it's just game by game, taking one at a time and. And I mean, honestly, the fans deserve much better than they've gotten this season. That's just that's just the frank truth. I think I think every player on the team knows that, and you know, and I think we all want to give them what they deserve because they've been incredible. Um, you know, I think they're they're really everyone says it, but I think they're truly some of the best fans of the league. If you talk about save the crew, that's you know what they did was incredible. So, um, you know, I think we all know what's in front of us, and it's just a matter of I mean, it's the toughest stretch of the season. The mo we I think we've had the most games and in, in the you know. Last last three four weeks we've had I feel like six or seven games have just been back to back to back to back but you just have to get through and push and and really fight um, and I think you know that's the bare minimum we can do is fight uh, uh, against Orlando so I, I I hope that's what we come out and do and punch him in the mouth and take three points <laughs> <laughs> figuratively speaking I want everyone to know. Yeah, yeah. allegedly yeah, sure, yeah. no red yeah. cards you know yeah. just <laughs> although if there's a nail gouge in there we know who threw the punch <laughs> exactly uh, now uh when you look at when you look at um you know coming from uh san diego to columbus and obviously look friends and family we get that move that out of the way <laughs> forget those people 
<laughs> what do you miss most? And again, Columbus is a great town. What do you miss most about where you grew up, Southern California? This is the easiest. Well, there's two easy, easy answers. If you say a burrito with French fries in it, I'm gonna hang up. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was gonna say Mexican food one. I got, I got one good taco truck that I found. So uh, you know, I love it there. And the beach and the sun. I mean, <laughs> I need the sun. It, we're getting to the crunch time here of, of right. winter. It's already getting cold and windy, and I, I, I don't do well in the cold. I'll be honest with you. I'm the guy with the, the fur jackets who just looks ridiculous. I, I need the sun. Um, but you know, definitely those. Two it's like things. 50 degrees, and you're dressed like it's 30. Exactly. I got the gloves on. I, everything. You know, I'm a big baby. But uh, <laughs> then, how you know, do you play I, in the cold? Oh, I don't. <laughs> He's like, don't put me in. No. He's like, the we shut is, it down. You have, to heat, it down. you have to heat your boots. You can't play with cold feet. You have to heat the boots, and then you can play. Um, but you have to put the boots in the heater. That's that's my helpful tip. Same thing for guys who are afraid to get married. You know, you got to heat the boots so you don't got cold feet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I mean, cold feet is usually what causes you to not want to get married. So, yeah, <laughs> heat the boots, my guy. <laughs> exactly. For sure. I, I'm curious, uh, having been born in Spain, is there any of the, like, Spanish food culture that uh, that, that your family maintained at all? Or is that – uh, Did toast? you just adopt oh. the Mexican in no, Southern no, California? We, I, I mean, Spanish food is still my favorite. And, you know, I moved here in, in Columbus to a place called German Village, and there's, like, a Spanish restaurant, like – 200 meters from my house and i got so excited and you, and, you know, said, you know it's, and it's you said meters restaurant. so i know you, we know you're european look how spanish you. <laughs> it's 200 meters restaurant. i'm like is that 17 miles or is that a few feet i have no clue <laughs> 200 Tell okay, me so in, like in 180 field, yards okay? 180 yards there you go okay, okay. not bad in yeah, the cold, but, that might take you about seven seven <laughs> hours to walk. Might take me longer. But, you know, it's 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 right by my house. Good Spanish food, so I, you know that's, that's what I'm here for. I can't complain. But uh, I I do miss I do miss good, good yeah, paella. Yeah, I mean, my family's Dominican, but my my mom makes a mean paella, bro. It's so good, man. You know, and I know I, I understand we have a Cuban here on the call too. My dad was born in Cuba, so uh, I'm, let's go. Yeah, there you go. There we go. <laughs> Miguel Barry, the bad, the maybe second or third best Cuban. I've got to figure out where you are in the, in the Cuban pantheon. Do you eat All a right. lot of Cuban food? Is that is that uh, something that's in the house? You know, I do. I do love Cuban food. My dad makes a good arroz con pollo. Um, you know, it's great. Yeah, exactly. Tostones. I could eat tostones all day. Bro, oh my god! Now it. I'm hungry. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, exactly. great. Me and your dad okay, gotta hang Miguel, out. Yeah, you, you don't go to realize Columbus you game. Part of the cool against family now. I don't know what to <laughs> yeah. tell you. You. I mean, it feels good. I got I got so many families now. <laughs> you know, I got the Columbus family. <laughs> so, Dude, yeah, I'm gonna be in, I'm gonna be in San Diego surfing, eating Cuban <laughs> food. You guys enjoy the cold. I'm gonna go hang out with the Barry family. <laughs> get to our gully squad questions these are questions from fan the gully squad is our supporters group okay is uh, similar to the nordak okay so uh first up we should we should start with andrew johnson andrew johnson is a diehard uh columbus crew supporter big, big crew fan uh, big fan of, he he asked this question he said uh, uh crew fans know the locker room is full of great dancers who is the worst and is it giazzi <laughs> I don't think I've seen Giassi dance, you know. Okay. I don't think I've. I don't think I've seen. I've seen his wife dance. We, we, we do, you know, and he just kind of stands there. So it might be Giassi, but you know, Waylon Francis is is up there, and he he's got Ooh. he's very confident in his ability, but he's, he's so stiff in the hips that I don't know. But it's all heart. Yeah, exactly. He's got a lot of confidence, exactly. but it ain't it ain't it ain't reached the hips. It's yeah. all heart out there. You know, there's quite a few people who who probably don't dance, but best dancer. I know you didn't ask that, but Harrison Awful is is up there. Jonathan Mensa is up there for the best okay. dancer. I can see it. I can see the, it. The, the Ghanaians can move for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He also asked, uh, "Your there's a handful of rabid crew fans that have vowed to get tattoos of Josh Williams's next goal. A, are the players aware of this? And B, which of your goals would you like to see immortalized?" <laughs> well, I don't think the players. I I haven't heard about this tattoo, um, but you know, I've been waiting for Josh to score for about two years now. So I, I think <laughs> I think they're pretty safe with the tattoo thing. Um, which of my goals? I don't know. Uh, probably not not the second and third Cincinnati ones because those were kind of gifts. So I, I'll admit that on on camera. But um, you know, I, I like the last one. I think the last one was a good team goal. But you know, 
uh, maybe the first one against New York Red Bull, you know, right? Yeah. Cut I mean, the defender cut, and put it through his legs. Cut through a yeah. couple of people. That was a beautiful, <laughs> yeah. beautiful goal. Yeah, maybe so that it's one. Gonna, you know what? It's going to be a big tattoo, okay? Because gonna, <laughs> yeah. They're going to have to show back, every movement. A whole back cover. <laughs> oh, I, I think I'm worth the chest. Come on. <laughs> yeah, li- you want full on chest? Yeah. Just when people wear shirts, you just got a little smiling Derek Etienne yeah, poking exactly. through because you scored against this one. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. This last question comes from Ira Jersey. Uh, and he, he, he it's not really a question, just more of a statement. He says, tell us that the Rebels were crazy for letting Derek Etienne Jr. go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I would agree with that. I don't know what, what I don't know. What, I was in the league then. I don't know what happened then. But every time we play against him, I feel like he's Megan, Megan, one of those guys and, and cutting them up. And, and so I don't know what they were thinking, but I'm the not a GM. Chat. and yeah, right. exactly. I'm not a GM, and hey, maybe, maybe I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe Derek was too much for him. Maybe he was making too many jokes in the locker room. But I doubt it. <laughs> Derek <laughs> is a friend. He got that Jersey joke. attitude, dude. It's tough. <laughs> exactly. Derek is great. Uh, yeah, and you know what? He 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 proved whoever he had to prove wrong by winning MLS Cup, getting getting an assist in an MLS Cup final. Uh, yeah. The dude is doing his thing. Hey, I'm Derek Etienne, and I kicked it with the Cooligans. Miguel, thank you so much again, man. This has been awesome. We have a couple of pieces of business before we let you go. We have to first get to our Galasso gift. This is uh, your opportunity to celebrate a goal on the Cooligans program on right here on football sports network we will turn it into a gift that will be on that will live on the internet forever alexis will give you a scenario uh so alexis what uh what do you got what do you got for the young man all right um if you score this goal it's the last minute you're in there it's a, let's put you up against cincinnati right you do another one of these near post runs you put your boot out you score but just before you did someone told you that if you scored they would open up a San Diego burrito style spot and a San Diego taco style spot 15 meters from your house, which I assume is less than what you suggested before for the Spanish restaurant. You score. So now you've got your, all of your favorite food within a short walk of your house. How do you celebrate? Oh man, that's a, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, (laughs) See, you know, I was, I was going to do something, when you brought it up earlier about, you know, Memphis to pie, but you know, I'm too excited to put your, put your fingers in <laughs> no, your no, ear no, like that. You can't be, you can't you be doing hear that. The food Maybe like sizzling. Serge Ganabry. No, you cooking? No. Cause now you know, you're you know the what food? Those, you know what the, I can't do it on camera, but you know what those Italian guys do when they, instead of taking off the shirt, they take off their shorts and they run around. I think that's what I would do, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I could do that on your show. I think, uh, I think no, the, 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 the standards <laughs> would, uh, would, go, would, would block it. We'd have to upload this episode on Pornhub. Yeah. I don't, I don't want it censored. So, but you know what? I think that's what I do. Um, you know, I might get fined by the league, but it is what it is. <laughs> okay. It's a good okay. one. Okay. So, so, all right. You know what? Just for the sake of the vi- the visual, we need you to wave oh, your yeah. arm like this. Yeah. There you go. Okay, there we, you got go. Got we got get, it. Put a, edit a pair <laughs> of shorts Just, in there. <laughs> yeah. Digital. We'll get the graphics team to add. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the CGI department will put shorts in there for sure. Uh, oh. Okay, Miguel Barry, thank you so much for joining us, man. This has been an absolute honor. We appreciate it. And again, best of luck uh, the rest of the season. Uh, is there anything you want to let people know about before we let you go? Uh, man, just follow me on Instagram, Miguel Barry9 at, uh, you know, on Instagram and, and, you know, just childhood cancer month. Uh, you know, let's, let's, let's get that. Let, let's take care of that as well. Um, that's something, clo- you know, cl- close to the heart. So let's, let's take care of that too. So, all right. right. Thanks so much, uh, Miguel. Everybody, you can make make sure you follow us at Soccer Cooligans on all social channels, uh, 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 at Football Sports as well, and subscribe to the Football Sports YouTube channel for full interviews and more clips of the show. Uh, All right, Miguel, let us end the show the way we normally do, as is tradition. So for Miguel Berry, my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerreros. And together, what are we? The Cooligans!